Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Open Buildings Designer live session. After every few sessions, we bring together some of our product experts for a roundtable discussion and pick their brains on some of the most important topics around BIM and Open Buildings Designer. Today is one of these discussions. In case you're joining us for the first time, let me introduce Open Buildings Designer. Open Buildings Designer is Bentley Systems complete design and BIM tool for architectural, structural, mechanical, plumbing and electrical design. Joining me today are Eduardo uh, and Raghuram. They're the product success managers for Open Buildings Designer and Beatrix. She's the sales engineer for the EMEA region. I'm Minakshi, your host for today's session, and I'm the sales engineer for the Asia Pacific region. Eduardo has actually helped us uh, curate some of the content for the series, and he's always behind the scenes um, answering comments. We'll do a quick round of introductions. Eduardo, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself first? Yeah. Thank you, Menaxi. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, as Menaxi says, my role is uh, senior manager for the for the product specialist team. We are working with open buildings and infrastructure, providing the technical knowledge for uh, coaching the people or showing the the product features. And yeah, the, our main task is provide this technical uh, knowledge. Um, Personally, me, I am working in this uh, environment for more than 25 years, working as a designer, as a trainer, developer, and a consultant. So I think more or less I have some background in all the all the sides of the of the job. And and also apart from that, um, I have been participating in several BIM initiatives to spread the BIM methodology and the knowledge, working mainly with Building Smart, mainly in the Spanish chapter, and also with some other initiatives like the BIM Commission for Spain. So, yeah, thank you. This is more, more or less about me. So now, Raghu, you. Hey, thank you, Eduardo. I mean, actually, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Raghu Ram uh, from our London office in UK. So uh, I'm an architect by my education and uh, have been um, taking the role of managing a team of uh, specialists or subject matter experts in Bentley systems uh, who are very proficient with open buildings designer. So in my current role, uh, my team and myself, we work with our users and help them to adopt open buildings designer for their day to day projects, delivering infrastructure projects, basically, and uh, designing buildings on all construction related activities. So that's my role, and I'm very happy to be with you to take part in this session. Thank you, Minachi. Beatrix? Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our session. Nice to see you, nice to have you with us. My name is Beatrix. I'm a sales engineer for Open Buildings, as Manakshi told you. I'm based in Germany and have worked for mechanical and civil industry and as well as in the automotive industry for a long time. My background is I'm a draftswoman. For, I was a draftswoman for over 30 years. And yeah, this is my experience. And I'm glad to join Virtuosity um, now for a little bit longer than a half a year. And I'm happy to be, to be a part of the team. And now let's go. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> So um, before we start the discussion, I just wanted to let you know that we have a 21 day trial of Open Buildings Designer. Uh, you can download it by scanning the QR code in the top right corner of the window. And you can once you download it, you look out for emails in your inbox with uh, some tips and tricks to get you started and user case studies to ensure you gain the most during the trial period. And um, during the session, we will be taking some of the questions or comments posted over LinkedIn. So please go ahead, type in your questions, comments, anything you want to share with us in the comment section. Um, and here are our email IDs as well. Feel free to email us should you have any questions later on for us. Uh, moving on. So I'd also like to briefly introduce the Going Digital Awards in Infrastructure. This is an exciting and prestigious global competition that recognizes advancements in infrastructure. Over the past 18 years, the awards have recognized the extraordinary work of over 4,000 projects spanning infrastructure design, construction, and operations. If you're an existing Bentley user, do consider nominating your project 
to gain recognition and unique opportunities to network and promote your organization. Um, in quarter four of 2022, there will be an award celebration in London where all the finalists get to attend and meet each other. So moving on, um, these are some of the topics we will be covering today. The grayed out topics were covered in our first roundtable discussion in November last year. The recording is available on YouTube channel and we've already shared the link for that in the comments. So today we will address the remaining pointers, starting with the scalable BIM solution, data management, visual reporting and interoperability. Before we get started, uh, I just want to let you know if you're attending the session over LinkedIn live, do know that the resolution will depend on the bandwidth and quality of your internet connection. So some tips connecting via the ethernet cable will give you the best quality of the connection. Uh, if you close down any applications that use up too much bandwidth, you, you will be able to see it much, much clearer if it, if it appears blurry for you. And um, yeah, if you're multitasking, it also reduces the resolution. So just in case you don't have a good internet connection, the recording will be posted later on on our YouTube playlist. So moving to our first topic, um, scalable BIM solution for any kind or size of a project. So what do we mean by a scalable BIM solution? And what are the features of Open Buildings Designer that uh, help achieve this? Uh, Eduardo, do you want to do you want to take this on? Yeah, thank you, Menaxi. So when when we were started speaking about BIM years ago, initially all of us were putting the focus into building, right? But oh, uh, me uh, during this year, the technology or the BIM methodology was started to be used in different kind of projects. So the the main requirement we need to cover here is the flexibility to be adapted. This means that uh, we can start with a small building, but we sometimes we are requested to to grow or to be scalable during the, the process, during the, the project development, right? Uh, starting from uh, a, a team of two, three people to be increased to a 20 or 30 people when, when a work peak is needed, in example, or to move from a medium size building to a skyscraper. But apart from that, this is clear that the BIM methodology is starting to be used in any kind of projects around the world. So it's not only about the size, it's about the type of project or the kind of project. We need to be able to use BIM methodology in a nuclear plant, in a train station or in a football stadium, right? So the thing is, we the, the strategy we are trying to define or recommend the people is about uh, a flexible strategy to be able to cover any kind or any type of project, but not only from the beginning, also to be adapted at, at, the, at, the, at the half of the project, right? So meanwhile, you are working, be flexible to be adapted. So in the in the slide, we can see different kind of projects. So, and some of the projects are civil linear project, infrastructure project like bridges or dams or nuclear plants or, or roads, because Sometimes when we think, when example, when we think in a in a rail line, we are thinking on the on the linear infrastructure on the rail line. But don't forget that a station on the middle of the rail line is a building, right? So this is why we need to be uh, flexible to cover all these aspects, and also to work in any geo coordinate system with any size. Yeah, this is mainly the dimensions and but anyway probably ragu can provide different point of view but the, the main message is this what what do you think ragu um, i agree edu and uh, i would add a couple of additional points here like how do we actually support uh, helping users to um, develop and deliver such kind of projects one is about the federated workflow where people can work very nicely um, where information can be abbreviated on demand. I think we discussed this in the previous uh, session. So that's one of the aspects of it. And I would like to add another aspect of it. When you mentioned it's an interesting point that we help users deliver projects around the globe. And we support that by uh, making sure that we deliver a lot of data sets along with open buildings designer that can be readily usable by users around the world. Um, which are tailored according to the regional standards or the 
library content that we can be very much utilized in that region. And having said that, we do also include uh, data sets, for example, for transportation projects. You mentioned about transportation projects. A station building could be a component of the project. It constitutes the building, but it's still part of the transportation infrastructure. To, to support such workflows, we did provide data sets for such projects also where people can start using that. And Minakshi mentioned that you can download the evaluation version of open buildings. And when you download it, you have the option to choose and download all these data sets for you. So everything is available right out of the box and that should help you to get started whether you design a small residential house or if you're working on a pretty large linear infrastructure project, then you can easily get started with Open Buildings Designer. Yeah, and, and also, um, as you say, in order to, to provide the people uh, or the user a quick way to start, we are providing regional data set adapted to probably every standard in the world. So when, when an organization or a country defining a standard for structural design or for structural shapes or for energy, yeah, we are incorporating. So this is also interesting when we are speaking about multinational or worldwide project, right? Because yeah. sometimes the infrastructure is connecting to countries. So this is need to be probably creating the reports or the output supporting two different standards, right? right. Yeah, this, I think the, 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 the data set uh, the regional data set is very important, also combined with the possibility of uh, discipline data set, right? That this is allowing you to create your own uh, structural uh, components or your own mechanical component, depending on the type of project. Probably this is not the same when we are speaking about a, 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 a beam for bridges than a beam for building, right? And we are able to support the, the two kinds of beams, yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, and another aspect is how uh, I mentioned about federated workflow that also has a kind of bearing on the way the data sets can be used by your organization. So if you have global teams, then you can obviously have a centralized repository of all your information and uh, people can use the information on demand. So hmm. we help you do that as well. So that is also one of the key success for you to deliver your um, BIM application because we are talking about um, projects that are executed by global teams. Yeah, yeah. In the next slide, Menaxi, uh, we will have some examples, right, of the two different kind, two different sizes of project. Right. You can see here how in the left part we have a small project that is forward house. This is a small house. This is a very, very iconic for the architect, but this is a small building that probably only one person can do, right, In from design. But the, the one at the right is a big train station combined with all the rest of the infrastructure, with the rail line, with the parking, with the cartography, the mesh for the context. So the, the, the idea is to provide a, one, one solution that, as we were speaking, is flexible to be adapted for both projects, right? So a small architectural firm can go in a small project, like mm -hmm. one single house. But anyway, when we are speaking about uh, participating in a big linear infrastructure project, we need to be aligned with the other. It's not only what we produce, it's the other data, the data created from other, and we need to be referenced, aligned. And you can see how the station is aligned with the, with the rail line, how we can create a section, including all the data. So, at the end is yeah the, the same tool don't forget that it's the same tool able to create the different kind of, of project right yeah. absolutely it is. Uh, i agree on that uh, point you mentioned so that means like users don't really have to go through specialized training processes for handling different types of projects so with one single application you have the capability to learn and deliver any type of project which your organization is involved with yeah, probably it's only about the strategy you followed in your project. It's not about you need different training. It's about, hey, if you want to be geo-coordinated with mm -hmm. other, other data, you, you need to be sure that the format you receive, how you are referenced, the, the context. But yeah, it's, it's just probably the, the project strategy the, and pre-coordination and not the, the, the design feature, not, not, not the training different 
different training needed for working uh, with the application. Yeah. You're right. And also such uh, such a large infrastructure project will have many uh, sub consultants as well who are working on very small parts of the project. So, you know, everybody can plug in uh, together. So they don't. Um, yeah. So finally, the main consultant is the one plugging into yeah. all these smaller pieces and it's not two different softwares needed. Yeah. And not only to be coordinated with other inventory software, that this is a typical case in our users, it's also about to be coordinated or geo-coordinated with others' application data, right? So past week, I was participating in an initiative from We Building a Smart Spanish Chapter, where we were showing three different applications working together, but synchronized. So we were receiving data from a GIS application that is not from Bentley in a file, in a in a in an open format we were incorporating the data into open buildings creating the building producing ifc so yeah this is the, the kind of collaboration but i think it's more linked with the next slide when right. we speak about the the difference of beam approach right yeah that right. is also a part of the of the scalability needed yeah yeah let me just move to the next one hmm. yeah. Uh, sorry yeah the one for yeah sorry. Uh, <laughs> it just jumped give me a second yeah. the previous one yeah no one more second this, time sorry Eduardo. It's a heavy slides yeah so the thing is uh, one goodness. of the key points of the scalability is about yeah this one it's about yeah. scalability of the team right so the team can be working on an open environment or a closed environment this is why we speak about open this is not only about open methodology, it's about open beam or closed beam. This is a discussion you can find in a lot of articles in the internet. But it's mainly to make difference between when the people is working in an open environment, in an open collaboration environment, and you need to do what I was saying before, receive data from GIS application from third party, incorporate it into your project, and produce data for other application. This is open collaboration environment, and we are, the solution is ready to participate because we support all the open beam and standard formats. But there is another different case that is very typical in, in closed ecosystem, right? Some companies decide to create an ecosystem for them and be sure that everyone is working with the same application and in the same environment. So if a company decides to create a closed beam, a closed customized context, this is also possible with open building. We can work in two environments. In the left part, you can see how open building is producing IFC and working with third party application. But in the right part, you can see our digital twin application that is connected with the open building designer in order to share the data and to, to work with closer rules. So everyone is asked to work in the same environment with the same methodology. Uh, but yeah, I think this is also some typical cases or some cases we found in some users like automotive companies, right, or factories, right? I think Beatrice have some some experience to share also about the mm -hmm. the this kind of users. Yes, I worked really a long time for the automotive industry and we had really um, every time the challenge to um, get all the data under one he head, I will say like that. And I will, I will say open buildings is a really good solution to put everything together. It doesn't matter if you have work in an open BIM or in a closed BIM uh, solution. Okay. So closed BIM is really, um, easy to handle after all. And yes, um, maybe every, uh, company small or big, are they they have to decide what they want to to use or want to have and what what is the outcome of all that and i think um open buildings is a really good thing for that for i will say for open bim you can mm. put all the all the datas together it doesn't matter where what software you use yeah we have several mm. examples and um, also this is just to provide the owner of the data yeah how yeah. do you want to work do you want to yeah. work in a collaboration environment use the open beam feature do you want to decide everything in your project from the beginning to the end all the properties having mm -hmm. even deciding who can modify a property closet environment do it uh, yeah. Raghu, i think you can also add some 
samples or some info. Sure, I, I can add uh, a little bit of technical info on the way we help with open BIM um, approach. So natively, open buildings designer can directly open more than 10 plus five formats, which means opening the files and then you can edit and read information directly within that. Apart from that, we do support reading and uh, uh, writing information in the process of import export functionalities. So more than 25 plus file formats can be easily read and delivered with Open Buildings Designer. And these file formats, I'm excluding the raster type. So Edu mentioned that we do support geo coordination. So we do support uh, rasters, which are also geo coordinated as well. So altogether, there's countless number of file formats, which we can support with Open Buildings Designer. And that's exactly what Beatrix mentioned. It, it doesn't matter. You might be using a different solution for uh, doing a particular task in your project, but Open Buildings will uh, possess greater capabilities to integrate those information um, for performing a well-coordinated design. So that's something which we call as Open BIM. And Edu also mentioned about um, reading and writing information formats to IFC which is also included along with the uh, product. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the technical aspect of it. I thought I would add to this discussion that, um, yeah, with Open Buildings, you have the option to work with a variety of file formats that is available in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think regarding the Open Beam or Closed Beam, this is about, as there are several theories about which option is better for you, I think the, the, the people can go to internet, look out for a lot of articles, take their own decision. But from my point of view, the main message to say, no matter which option you decide, you can use the same tool in both environments. You can create a project, a workshop that is work dedicated to be fully open beam. And also you can work in a boss, in a workshop, in a project that is fully configured to be closer. So no matter here, this is about so in that whole the the same solution can be adapted yeah. and based on our experience we helped our users to adopt both ways like open them and the closed beam approach and as mm -hmm. edu pointed out certain projects which are of um, uh, significant importance where data integrity is the key so people don't want to um, uh, disclose the information where you know you have a limited set of participants working in a very secure environment, but still coordination need to happen. So we do support such work process. But yeah. Okay. Should we move on? Yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah, you, thank, thank you, Minakshi. Yeah, this is a thank very you. good point um, about um, a key success to the BIM project delivery itself. And we are proud to ensure that Open Buildings Designer has been designed to uh, be flexibly adopted for any type of workflow, actually. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, we go on. Okay, so our next topic is about uh, data management. And um, so in what way do you think and better management of the non-graphical data? Because of course, BIM, you know, the, the engine of BIM is a lot of the non-graphical data. In what way can better tools um, uh, accelerate the BIM design process? With respect to I, I, I digging into the into web, there is a lot of articles or discussion about what is the most used tool in a BIM project, right? Uh, the people was having some options, some discussion, some people pointed about different design tools. But I think this is a, a, a common uh, agreement in, about the most used tool in a BIM project is probably Excel, right? Because in a BIM project, probably only the 20, 20, 25% of the data is graphical. There's a lot of data. You need to manage documentation data. So the thing is, okay, how to help the people, how to help the users to do a quick access and a quick addition to the data in, a, in, a, in an easy and user-friendly way. So I think that providing the people to create the custom report template, create editing the data from Excel is Mm, I think that all of us have Excel installed in the computer, right? I think it's yeah. providing the people a door, a door for a really, really uh, useful uh, way to, to edit the data and to manipulate the data. So, and also saving a lot of time. Right. 
Yeah, I would add to that as well. Um, you're right about the point, Edu, that 25% uh, of the entire project is about dealing with the geometry, but the rest of the 75% is all about the business centric metadata that is embedded within the geometry. And this information is being used not only in the initial schematic stages of the project, but that date, that information is what being used for the longer run, including the asset lifecycle maintenance, right? So data is the key. And uh, how do we manage that data? As uh, you pointed out, you know, Excel is one of the simpler tool that is available for anybody to use in a project and make the best decisions uh, on the information that is residing within these geometry in them, right? So that's one of the best aspects of Open Building Designer. You don't need a separate plugin to work with all these information. So you do have all the tools within the program that will help you to work with it. And also uh, the information is tailored or it could be customized with open formats like XML. So when you deliver a particular type of project, that could be a requirement for customizing a certain type of metadata. And with Open Buildings Designer, yes, you can easily encode the business schema that need, that is needed for the project. So it could be sometimes it is driven by the project or sometimes it is driven by a manufacturer of a product or sometimes it is driven by the organization that is executing the project or most of the times it is the local standards that requires a particular set of information for delivering the project. So the recent ones are we are seeing advancements in the way uh, information is submitted digitally, right? So municipalities around the globe are trying to yeah. consume the information embedded in the model and use that information for a digital approval process. So in such scenarios, managing this data will be really important and providing a flexible platform for users to customize the information and embed the information along with the type of geometry being used in the project, it's really very critical for delivering the projects that adopts BIM workflows. But, but also imagine a real case, right? You are working on a skyscraper, 25, 30 floors, 40 floors. Uh, every element like a door or a window needs to have a code, right? right? So imagine you are designing and at the end of the project you are having 40 windows per floor, 40 floor, okay, 1,600 windows. And you need to assign a code. There is two options. You can go one by one, editing the properties, adding a code, or you can use a tool like Excel saying, hey, show me the data of the 1,600 windows, right? And start, uh, show me the, the information and allow me to assign via Excel a code based on the floor and the numbering of the window. So probably you can do in one minute the tax you will need probably four hours to edit manually 1,600 windows, right? Mm, or, yeah. or adding a, a label to spaces. But apart from that, there is not only adding properties, it's also manipulating the geometry. Suppose that you need to modify the size of the diffuser for the whole ventilation system in the same skyscraper. And you need to find 200 diffuser that is currently 20 centimeters radius to move to 30 centimeter radius. What is the most easy way is go to Excel, manipulate the diameter and say apply. So Excel is a very powerful tool and in combination with a geometry design tool, I think it's saving a lot of time, right? I remember a, a project for a soccer stadium refurbishment that soccer, the, the biggest in Europe, that is, we're just speaking about 80,000 sites in a soccer study. And when the project was finished, someone took the idea of reassign the code for every seat on the stadium. Mm -hmm. 80,000 seats. Yeah. So, okay, I was speaking with this and told me, how can I do it? And I told, excellent, perfect. They do, they do it in one day, the tax they will need to do probably in three weeks. So at the end, it's a tool very, very important to save time and also to provide flexibility to create every report, every template you want to do a lot of the linking data with 
Power BI, linking data or creating your own reports, applying formulas. For me, it's very, very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I think we do have, you know, uh, we had in our session three or session four of the LinkedIn Live, we showed this a little bit more in detail, the bi-directional editing from um, mm -hmm. Open Buildings Designer to Excel and and uh, Excel to uh, like Open Buildings Designer. So that's, I think, uh, it's one of the playlists and I could post the list, post the link uh, to it in a bit. Yeah. So okay, it's, uh, let's move on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so visual reporting. So we are familiar now that, that we just spoke about, you know, we're familiar with schedules and reports and the ease mm. to extract this information in BIM. So right. what do we mean? What do we really mean by visual reporting and how, uh, how exactly does yeah. Open Buildings Designer uh, support this? I summarize in a very short sentence. That is, if we are using a 21th century technology to provide 20th century reports like PDFs or Excel, or are we going to use the 21th century technology to produce 21th century reports? So we are using mobile, we are using a lot of devices, showing a lot of graphical, we are playing with games like Sims that is providing you a, a virtual reality of a city. So are we really still producing 2D Excel spreadsheet or can we use the technology to produce 3D reports showing visually what is the expected life of your uh, of your furniture, what is the the the, the fire resistance for the doors, or any classification you can do, or classify your complete model based on uniclass or omniclass. At the end, I think visual reporting is a very very powerful tool to create to create new report to sell the product because at the end every architect needs to sell the product to the stakeholder. I right? need to explain what the product is, right? And, and stakeholders a lot of times being laymen, you know, people who are uh, doing the approvals, etc. So it's mm -hmm. so it's just easier. Um, yeah. yeah, communication is probably one of the key aspects for an architect. Ragu is architect, yeah. so Ragu can explain yeah. better than me. How important is the communicate your project to the other, right? Yeah, that's really important. Not only in the aspect of communication aspects of it, but also to understand the quality of the design. So visual reporting is running a query inside the model based on the intelligence embedded behind the geometry in them, right? Sorry about that. That's my wife interrupting. So please excuse me. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Um, all right. So going back to the visual reporting aspects of it. So we do have the option to ask a simple question. Like when you design your project, you might be asking a number of questions to yourself to say, where are my fire rated doors located in the project? So if I wonder, is there a way to quickly display or show me where those doors are located? You know, that's the kind of questions that can be answered by visual reporting. So identifying a fire rated door may be a simple query, but I can ask additional questions to highlight the doors that are in the path of the accessible design standard criteria. So then when I throw a complex query like that, it's easy for me to understand if my design satisfies the quality for the particular project, the design quality for the particular project. Does it meet the standards? You know, that's the important aspect of it, which they were not able to do before the day, days of BIM. So with BIM workflows, so these are the new capabilities that can be leveraged in our projects today. So that's where visual reporting becomes really significant in my view. And users like it because one, as I said, it's it gets them to design better quality buildings. Two, it really saves them time to find the information they look for in such projects. And uh, imagine the project, what Edu mentioned about a football stadium. If you wanted to identify a piece of information in that large project, you can trust visual reporting to perform all those queries and identify the information you need in your project quickly. Yeah, and don't forget that in the last years, we have moved for a from BIM methodology to digital twin methodology. What does it mean? 
This means that when we are using a BIM application like Open Buildings to design a building or a soccer stadium or whatever, you need to think about what what the use will be done, right? How what the people will do with the data you are creating. So when you are creating your model and sharing for the digital twin, the the creating this kind of visual reports, like as you say, football stadium. Okay, we need to divide into sectors to sell the tickets. Okay, this is not the same, the not the same price. So for there is a lot of uh, cases where you can use the visual reporting to show the different value or the different life of the different properties of the model. I think it's, at the end is another step to to take the most of the model we are creating because as we as I was saying at the beginning, 25 percent of the data is geometry. The other is hidden data you need to query. Yeah. So in order to query, you can do traditional queries or you can do visual queries. So I think the visual queries is easy for 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 maintenance, for manipulation, for and take take decisions about the project. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody's understanding that really quick about the wish yes. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I always put the same example. That is, my father is 80 years old. He has no computer background except for the last five years. Try to show them a traditional drawing, an Excel spreadsheet, or a visual reporting. And later, tell me what is better than this tool by him, right? Anyway, when you are creating a building, at the end, you are selling an idea, a project to someone. Mm -hmm. And not everyone needs to be architect with the same knowledge than you, right? Right. No. And, and one point I would like to add is the visual reporting functionalities are available only in the latest Connect editions. So if somebody is using the still on the older V8i generations and they wonder, hey, how do I do my visual reporting? Obviously, the choice is upgrade to the latest version and you'll be able to do this within a few clicks. Yeah, take the most of the technology you are paying for, right? So yeah, when you are having a mobile, you are not having an Android or an iOS version from five years ago. You are trying to upgrade your mobile to the latest version. Do the same. Take the most of the technology you are paying for, right? Right. I, I often get questions from the old version users, like, you know, how do I do my visual reporting? Oh, the first thing you should do is upgrade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good um, choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me move forward. Um, mm -hmm. So interoperability, this is uh, this is a lot about what we uh, spoke uh, about, uh, right, Eduardo? It's already open BIM, closed BIM. How do how does open building designer really support the open BIM? Yeah. Um, yep. Go ahead. Sorry. But but it's not only open BIM. Open BIM is a part of the interoperability, right? Yes. When we are working in in the project and we need to coordinate with others or we need to share data to the next mm -hmm. phase, yeah, we can use open BIM, IFC, COVID, but sometimes we forget the legacy data so what happens when you are going to work in a project but you have a lot of 2d drawings or you have a lot of data or you have a, a terrain or a cartography map and you need to use so it's not only about IFC. it's about you can incorporate dgn dwg sketch of files uh, gis file in terms of geotiff or a lot of raster format so it's about support all the standards in the market to to incorporate your data before you work and also when you are producing your data it's about a chain with others in terms of export to sketchup or the export to ifc or export to gbxml for energy analysis so i think ragu was mentioning at the beginning about the how many five format we support uh, honestly i forget the number is probably more than 40 or 50 different five format we support four for uh, importing data, but also for exchanging data. And changing data to share with other application is, is very important, right? right? What do you think, Raul? Uh, yeah, when it comes to interoperability, I, I sometimes think about firms in the olden days where they do nothing but you know conversion. So the only job for them to do is ensure that information is converted in the right way. And that is, going to take weeks and months of time for converting information from one format to another in the process of communicating the design information from one stakeholder to another yeah. so that was really a killer at some point in time where 
people send, spend too much time and money only for exchanging information using meaningful conversion tools or third party um, uh, stakeholders who are involved only in that job. Thankfully, with Open Buildings Designer, yes, we, you really don't have to go through such a tedious task nowadays because the application by itself can read and write all the information according to some of the latest and greatest industry standards. You can really save a lot of time in your project. So that's the point I would like to add why interoperability is important because it, it's going to help you save time and at the same time it ensures that the stakeholders focus more on design rather than really worrying about the conversion aspects of it or ensuring that the data quality yeah. is consistent while the conversion is happening okay. and and for every stakeholder it's about uh make the life easier right exactly. so uh, when we just speak about a stakeholder, it's not only about the other designer or other people that are using a, a design tool. It's also the manufacturer of the chair or the manufacturer of the mechanical equipment. So the option is, I am going to work with a manufacturer to provide me the equipment for this project. Okay, perfect. No matter which is the file format you are using for your catalog, I will incorporate. Is your catalog created in DGN, DWG, IFC, SketchUp, Revit families? No problem. Give me your data and I will incorporate it into my project because I can work with all this data, right? Uh, SketchUp, Step, uh, ACA, IS. So there is no problem. So when, when speaking about, about BIM, um, sometimes I simplify BIM in the sentence that is don't do it twice, right? So the thing is, if you design a chair or if you design a mechanical equipment, if there is already designed it, don't I don't want to replicate into my model. I want to use the same. So if I am able to use the same data, I am not doing the same thing twice. If I am designing a structural frame model, and I want and some other people in my in the team needs to make a, a structural analysis, the best way is not to design, not to be designed or, or uh, not not to be repeated by the other people. It's about share my model. This person can make the analysis and send me back the result. So at the end, interoperability for BIM, for analysis, for every CAD format is about simplify the life of the all the stakeholders and also simplify the, 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 the data transfer. But at the end is, okay, save time for all the people involved and make the life easier if possible, right? Yeah, in my view, it is more like promoting, you know, the digital sustainability. So normally when we speak about sustainability, we speak about the three R's, right? So reduce, reuse, recycle. So the same principle applies for digital content as well. So we have been creating humongous amount of content every day, which is sometimes not needed at all. So if we have the capability to reuse some of the content, then we are uh, preventing the creation of digital waste. So interoperability is an approach towards that. So we know that is information already available, then why not we take the steps to reuse it, you know, make the best use of it. So that's what we try to address with the interoperability in open buildings design. And that's exactly the reason we support a wider variety of file formats and also comply with the industry standards for all these exchanges. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, the, there is a lot of organization, but mainly is DIN or ISO who are defining the standards. So sometimes we find local standards that is not a standard, but this is a data transfer used in a small region of a country or in a country. But we need to analyze that how important it is to use standards in terms of ISO or DIN standard, right? Because when we define a standard, it's not only defined a file format, it's defining a communication process. When we use an example IFC, it's not only the same schema. It's defining that the same name for my door, no matter if I work in Spanish, Italian, or English, the same name for my door will be the, the name you receive into your application in Czech or German or English. So at the end, is interoperability is very important in terms of format and communication. And also, this is probably one of the key aspects 
every project or every BIM manager needs to take into account at the beginning of the project, analyze, hey, which application we are going to use, what is the communication we are going to follow. And the main message for me is, I think it's very hard for me to find a standard in terms of building a standard we are not following, right? As well as our plan solution is following the plan ISO standards, we are following the building ISO standard in terms of communication. And also we are um, following the ISO 19650 standard in terms of uh, file naming or, or naming convention for objects, because it's not only, as I told the format, it's about the language, the common language we use. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you a question here. So would you be able to say what is the best interoperability file format to use in a BIM project? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion, the best interoperability format no need to be the same or no need to have a global answer. It will be depend obviously on the project, right? On the requirement of a project. Mm -hmm. If we are speaking about share the building you have in the in the in the screen, right? Yeah. You need to share this building for an energy analysis. You will need GBXML format. But if you are setting the model for coordination with other design tool, probably it will be a IFC. But if you are setting the model for operational maintenance, you will need to export IFC with Kobe. So there is not uh, uh, there is not the perfect or, or the unique uh, file format. This is one of the reasons that we need to cover more than 40 or 50. I don't remember the, ex mm, the right. accurate number, right? But yeah, <laughs> trying to provide the people flexibility to make their own choice. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's why yeah. most of the time um, the the execution plans for such projects, the BIM execution plans, they really talk about information requirements because information is the key. So as Edu pointed out, information can reside in a different types of file formats. The key is the enablement in the tool for you to make use of the existing information. So that is really important rather than in which file format the information resides. And also because uh, honestly, I saw a lot of uh, BIM models exported to IFC. So apparently there is a good file format, but when you analyze the data, all the properties are empty except door or window. So this is a valid file format, but there is not a valid data inside the file format because it's not useful for me if all the doors are having the same properties and there's no difference between the main door or the door between rooms or the door for the toilet. So we need some information. Right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you want to add anything about, uh, you know, the image on the right hand side of the slide where you, where it says that, you know, there are so many, for example, this image, uh, is the drawing, the model is made up of all these different uh, file formats put together. Yeah. yeah, for me, what I would add here is a building is not only a structural and architectural elements, right? Mm -hmm. At the end, the building mm -hmm. is composed also from manufacturer, manufacturer elements, uh, objects, landscaping, uh, the, the site. So apart from the, the data you create, you need to incorporate always data from third parties. So in example, if the curtain wall or if the, if the loop for a specific window is created by a manufacturer and they will share you in, in, in RFA, in Revit family format, you can incorporate. But if, they, if you want to add a, a, a bench, you will make with a SketchUp to your landscaping or trees, because it's back again to the idea of you need to sell your project to the stakeholder. Probably yeah. if you sell your building on the hyperspace, it could be probably nice, but this is not realistic. You need to put your building on the terrain, geo-coordinated with landscaping, shared to a, a, a nice tool for rendering. So all these objects you need to add can be can come in every format, but also uh, the manufactured object that is so important. So this is why on that uh, picture you can see element manufactured object that is coming on a sketch format on dwg or rabbit family or, or 3d studio or, or rhino doesn't matter this is a different file format we can incorporate yeah okay so so coming to uh, which versions of uh, revit uh, rfa files are supported by open buildings okay 
Good point. Raghu, do you want to answer? Yeah, sure. I mean, we have been supporting the RFA format for the past six or seven years, uh, Minamshi. So yeah, okay. we can read information from some of even the legacy data revit families as well. We will be able to incorporate that. And we are continuing our support even for the latest version of content coming in RFA format. Okay. Um, yeah, so while, while we read those information, we also do maintain uh, some of the parametric associations that are embedded in the RFA format. So while we read the RFA format, we create or we create the necessary parametric definitions for those geometry. So when I bring in that information, I would be able to modify the information or edit the information according to the uh, schema defined inside the RFA files. So yeah. in my knowledge, yeah, we are supporting it for, for the last more than six or seven years, actually, the yeah. RFA format. In terms of version, we can consider open building we use Revit family object in an agnostic mode. So it's, it's the same for me if there is 2016, 2020, or 2022, or 2022 version, right? So the thing is, the same solution is able to eat different versions. So no need to ask, okay, send me the chair or send me the bench or send me this window in a specific version. No, no, no matter. Mm -hmm. Which is the file you have? This one? Give me. I will put it into my project. No problem. Okay. Got it. Yep. Okay, so that's actually almost the end of our uh, the topics that we are looking at. Let me just uh, let me just introduce. Um, so I just wanted to go through some of the content that we have. Um, you know, we have we've been producing a lot of this uh, learning content for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So this is uh, these this is a playlist of our LinkedIn live sessions, and here's the YouTube link. We've also posted in our comment section. You can copy and paste from there, and and we have it in our LinkedIn group as well. Uh, so we have a group on LinkedIn called Inside Open Buildings. It should be fairly easy to look for it. So all our sessions are uh, posted here, and um, so just just look out for this. Join the group, and we we can uh, approve your invite. And um, so yeah. Yeah. So all our recordings, even from today. Sorry, go ahead. No, just regarding YouTube, Menaxi. Yes. Uh, in our um, in our open building channel, yeah. that this is we are uploading an average of one video per day, right? So yes, every yes. day they will find a new video. Absolutely. Currently, we are uploading open building standard update nine. What's new video? One new video every day for a structural drawing production. So. I, yes. I recommend the people to subscribe because this is the best way not to miss any important video, a part of this live series. But if the people want to learn about the yeah, they need yeah. to know that we are aggregating almost one video per day. It's an average, yeah. Absolutely. And and it's well curated content. Um, so you it's easy to follow with, with voiceovers. So it's easy to follow. And that's also in my next slide, I think. I also wanted to um, show this. So Eduardo and team, they've been working on this. Um, it's like an online manual. You know, of course, those physical um, manuals are, we don't do that anymore for learning new software. But this is this is pretty close to that. It's like an online manual. It's available in Bentley communities. Again, I posted a link to that. And it's also on our LinkedIn uh, group. So this uh, this is for open buildings, we also have it for other products. So this for open buildings, you can go through the different tabs here, expand on them. We have introductory training for all disciplines and then specifically for architects and electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. So just go through this, this is pretty easy. And if you are, if you work on more than one of these, um, of the Bentley yeah. software, it's also available here. We have open plan model, open road, and and it's ever growing. It's, it's uh, growing and some yeah. of the, and in, and within this is embedded uh, the YouTube videos, you know, again, nicely curated. Uh, there is a format that they follow. Um, so yeah, look through this. Yeah. The the issue here is, Menaxi, as you say, when mm -hmm. Google providing physical uh, training material, the physical training material is really, really outdated, quickly yeah. outdated today, right? So you produce some material for open buildings, update six, and the people mm -hmm. start asking you, okay, but one year later, mm -hmm. I need to, pull everything to the trash right so <laughs> we we change it and we try to provide more dynamically material for the people with youtube video right as we speak, yeah. spoke but we realized that as much more videos are in the youtube channel more half of the people is to find really or to track hey how to follow a specific training right this yeah. is why 
we created this wiki. So the idea for the wiki is, is providing access to the YouTube videos, but in an ordered way. So do you want to learn for architectural intro training, go for architectural, let it follow the tips and trick for architectural, providing the people a, a, a way to find the videos in a logical way, because YouTube is YouTube is posting the videos and the sort is for the most popular, for the newest, but it's very hard to create a, a, a training agenda on YouTube. This is why Absolutely. we are creating here the agenda for making the people easier to follow the, the training. Yeah. yeah. So especially if you're somebody new uh, following Open Buildings Designer, this is this is a great um, resource for that. And um, yeah, and also we we yeah. believe that the knowledge the knowledge should be public and commonly yeah. available. This is why we are not only for, for open building inventory, we are increasing the number of videos we have in YouTube, trying to make the knowledge more accessible for all of our users. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And we also have very focused webinars for uh, industry uh, focus. For example, uh, we had for station design, we have a water reclamation plant. So this is available on our um, virtuosity website under the resources. So these, you can go through this. This is more for uh, intermediate to advanced users. Um, if you're, if this is one of your project type and like Eduardo mentioned, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's, that's right here. Uh, you just have to search using Open Buildings Designer, Bentley, and then this has many playlists, uh, and it's sorted by discipline as well. Um, so yeah, this is this is a great resource if you're following us. Um, do subscribe to this. Moving on, and uh, our next session will be more for um, architects who are upgrading from CAD to BIM with Open Buildings Designer. You know what are the advantages that BIM has over CAD, and what is how can you uh, transition more smoothly? How can you migrate your uh, your your CAD skills, how can you migrate your team from CAD to BIM? So we'll be covering a lot of this uh, in our next session. So stay tuned, join our LinkedIn group to know when exactly the session will be. Um, so modeling and information management benefits for architects. And after that, we have we will have one more session for structural designers, for example. So we plan on uh, bringing these two, three sessions which focus on moving from CAD to BIM. And again, that's the QR code. Uh, in case you're having difficulty scanning the smaller one, here's the larger one. Scan the QR code. You can download your 21-day free trial, and it's it's accompanied by a lot of by a lot of content that can help you uh, learn and um, gain more information about the user case studies as well. And uh, that's about it from my side. Does uh, anybody have anything else to say? Raghu, Edu, Beatrix. Uh, okay. Thank you, Minakshi, for the, the nice and crack session. So before we conclude the session, I wanted to ask, are there any questions from the users that requires answering from us? I don't see any uh, no. questions. Mm -mm. No, 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 no more questions. At the question. moment. No, no, no the Minakshi moment. share with other the question, but no more questions now. Yeah. Yeah, we don't yeah. have any yeah. questions as of now. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was, apparently it was all clear. But, but, <laughs> no, but anyway, the chat, the chat of the yeah. session can be followed later, or the people yeah, can go to the inside open buildings uh, LinkedIn group and share questions there. No problem. We will answer. Yeah. Or yeah, our, and, and our email address are public there, also they can also send an email, right? Yeah, and and a lot of times, uh, Eduardo, we do have uh, you know once this recording is posted on the YouTube playlist, we have some mm. users comment uh, or yeah. ask questions there as well. So we always reply to those questions. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So thank you for the people who attended live today. And also thank you for all the people who is watching this recording in YouTube. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, everybody. You, everybody. Thank yeah. you all. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Have a nice day. Session. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye